Hi, this is Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts. Here with a word from Colossians chapter 3, verse 5 through 8, followed by Pat's two cents. Okay. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. You know what mortify means? Kill it, baby. Okay, let me read that again. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornication, <clears throat> uncleanness, inordinate affection. Yeah, let me repeat that. Inordinate affection. Yeah, read into that one. Evil concupiscence and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Hmm. In the which ye also walked some time. Let me read that again. In the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. But now ye also put off all these. Anger. Wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Hmm. Yeah, that doesn't take a rocket scientist now, does it, to figure that one out? So I read that to say that for some of you who think, Oh, a few little cuss words, a little, you know, se you know, sexual innuendos, a little flirtatious naughtiness. <laughs> Not a big deal. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Then let's move up a little bit, and we see that he requires mortification. Now, the crazy thing about that is, of course, we're not supposed to kill parts of our body. However, we are to kill what they do. So you have to watch what you're doing. What's coming out of your mouth? What are you saying? Who are you playing with and what kind of games are you playing? He doesn't want fornication as much as we think we should have the right. Because um, three times seven, baby. No, uh, no, it doesn't go like that. You live on a place. You know, you think you may own your house. But God's, God owns the earth your house sits on. He owns you. He owns everything that pertains to you. So if you think that you can just live uh, haphazardly doing whatever else you want to do, trust me, baby, it doesn't go down like that. Okay, I got to say it in bad English. It sounds better. It don't go down like that. Okay, listen. He does not want covetousness, which is idolatry. You ever watch how young people, they're steadily uh, imitating the stars, the, the, the rap stars, the singers, the celebrities, and they fix their hair like them. They talk like them. They, I mean, they do everything to emulate them. They wear their makeup like them. Uh, the guys like to, you know, do the gestures. I, I mean, it is so sad. But in America, baby, that is called idol worship. I don't care how you try to contempor contemporize it. Yeah, look that one up in the dictionary. I think I just made up a new word, y'all. Like, uh, what's that other word they use all the time that they always make up? Conversate. Woo! Instead of converse. Con yeah, anyway, we won't go there. But what I'm trying to say to you is... God is not playing like you think he is because he is merciful and long suffering. We think, eh, it was a little sin here and a little sin there. And here a little bit, there a little bit, everywhere a little bit. Mm, yeah. Mm -mm. No. No. You can laugh. I can chuckle. We can wink. God ain't playing. When he talks about inordinate, I got to say it correctly, inordinate affection, inordinate affection, that includes homosexuality, you guys. That includes pedophilia. For you who don't know what pedophilia is, 
It's when adults get turned on by little kids. Little kids. We're not even talking adolescents, even though that's part of it. But little kids. And if they had one moment, they would try to molest or totally have a sexual encounter with a little child. That's called inordinate affection. That's what that's called. Yeah. Think about that. Think about the things that we toy with and play with and we think it's okay. You know, I watched some kids and I had to I had to warn the mother. There were some teenagers. They had a little sister. And I looked at them and they were kissing on the little girl. Next thing I knew, they were tongue kissing with the little girl. The little girl was no more than about one. And I warned the mother. I said, these kids are teenagers and their hormones are going crazy. You stop them from doing that or it's going to go somewhere down the incest route. If you don't stop it now, scare them. Tell them how creepy it is to want to have sex with your sister or brother. So, I think one of the reasons that we have so many weird problems nowadays is because parents, I would say maybe 70%, I'll be kind, maybe 65%, are not really parenting any longer. They don't teach their children. They don't counsel their kids. They don't reason with them. They don't share wisdom and insights and teach them life's principles that come from biblical standards. Oh, they don't teach all that. Because they want to go by the philosophy, yeah, okay, I'm okay, they're okay, we're okay, and everything is okay. Yeah, it ain't okay. Because what your child ends up growing up like is a weed. They grow up way too fast, you guys. Way too fast. Listen to what I'm saying. Stop taking this stuff so lightly. You got boobs flinging on one screen. You got other body parts, even more private body parts, showing up on another screen. They're on mobile phones. They're on tablets. Everywhere you go, you're looking at body parts. And then we wonder why people are so bound with sexual enticements. Why they have the can't help it. If you don't teach your children now, while they're young, you might as well just tell them to bend over and kiss their behinds goodbye. Because they're going to grow up every which way but right. They're going to do everything they're big and bad enough to do. If they live long enough to make a change. You have kids in elementary school trying to reenact what adults have done to them behind your back because they're trying to get other little kids to have sex with them. They know how to have it, baby. <laughs> You're not hiding a thing. They probably know more about some sexual maneuvers than you do. At seven, eight, nine years old, it's on and cracking at that point. If you are not teaching your kids. People can't just do what they're big and bad enough to do. I don't care how big and bad you think you are. You can't battle AIDS. You can't kick AIDS in the butt. AIDS is going to kick you in the butt and kick you to the curb and eventually take you out. 
So a climax here, a nut up here, a, 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 a little nipple there, a little suction cup and a little oral sex and a little, come on now. You're playing Russian roulette with your life. And guess what? So are your kids. If you are too busy with your boyfriend or your uh, man, if you want to call him that, he comes over for the booty call. You answer the call, and he's gone. He's hitting the wind. Ain't nobody helping you out. You just, you know, dishing it out like candy, like candy on Halloween. And your kids are sitting up there in some room, half-dressed, sitting up there eating up cold french fries, watching some sorry TV programs, they might even be watching X-rated because you're not monitoring what they're doing. You're too busy. Let's get it on. Oh, you're too busy getting it on. You're not sitting down talking to your kids about life. You're too busy playing with it yourself because you haven't grown up. So what you really need to do while you want to get out there and play Sew some stuff, some stuff up, cut some stuff away so that you cannot produce or create or carry any children. I'm talking male and female, I'm not talking to just women, I'm talking to all y'all out there. Y'all need to get yourself fixed until you can get your head screwed on right and stop playing games. Because God, all he has to do is inhale and you drop like a little dead fly. You think you have until the end of your life. I mean, you think that all you have to do is just uh, do what you want to do and play what you want to play and play with who you want to play and, and yeah, the way you want to play with them. And you think that uh, you can say what you want to say and you can lie and scheme and play all kind of underhanded tricks and, and you can play with this chick and then go over and play with that chick and, 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 and you think you're Mr. Casanova. No, these little sorry chicks are just desperate. It could be you, it could be any pair of pants. They just need attention. Half of them don't have a daddy that's taking time or a mama. So they're looking at you or anybody else, looking for love in all the wrong places. You know, this is like a... um a vicious cycle, it's it's like a spiral. You ever watch water when it spirals down the drain? It just goes down and doesn't spiral up. It spirals down. And if you don't watch it, baby, you're going to spiral all the way down the drain. This is your warning. God is coming back soon. When his judgment comes, it's going to be harsh. Is going to be unbearable. And you think that you're going to escape it because you probably think you're either going to die beforehand or, or that ain't going to happen for another two or three hundred years. So, hey, while I'm here, I might as well play. You're going to pay the piper. God is angry. Listen to this. I want you to hear this. Because you think you can do what you want to do. Okay. For which sake, excuse me, for which thing's sake, the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. The wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. The wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. That means Doing what God does not want you to do. That's what you call disobedience. Breaking rules. And you think because you live in grace and you're forgiven by Jesus Christ that you can do what you want to do, say what you want to say, go where you want to go because it's all taken care of. It's covered in the blood. Mm -mm. Doesn't go that way. The same Jesus that saves you and that has saved you 
will look at you one day when you're bragging in his face, oh Lord, have I not prophesied in your name? Have I not done all these wondrous miracles, all these things in your name? Whoop do doop do doo Look at all that I've done. Boom, boom, boom. Hey. And Jesus is going to look at you and say, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. And iniquity means sin. Nah, nah, God's a loving God. No, I know you're joking. Oh, you're joshing me. I No, 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 you're kidding me. Ah. And you say that all you want. And you keep on playing. You know, one time I was dating a guy. And I was spending too much time with him. I was driving home one night. I'm telling you, I don't play. I've learned to fear the Lord. I was driving home. I felt him so angry. I felt God's anger all around me. You know that scared the boo-boo out of me? That scared the bajazzes out. I pulled my car over to the curb and sat there and cried my eyes out, copping a plea, Lord, please have mercy, God, please help me get it together, Lord, I do not want to depart from you, Lord, whatever you do, I will cut anybody loose, don't let me lose you, I felt his anger, I don't care how much God loves us, he's got a side you don't want to meet, and if his anger gets to the point where there is no more mercy that can satisfy that anger, you will taste the wrath of God. You don't want to do that. Now, I know some people are talking about hell, and that's coming too. But I'm talking about right here, in the here and now. God knows your number, and he knows what hurts you. He knows what will get to you the most. Don't play with them. Please, whatever you do, don't play with him. I knew an older woman. I played some games with one of her relatives. And you know what? She died slowly. When I say slowly, one part of the body was cut off. Infection. Another part of the body was cut off. Infection. Another part of the body was cut off. Infection, dialysis, infection, complications, pain, infection. Oh, it was like, oh, by the time all of that had happened to this woman, you didn't even recognize her. She looked like a, a blowfish with lips that were about to fall off. I mean, it was the weirdest thing. And I'm not saying it to be disrespectful to her. My point to you is God knows what it will take to make you bend the knee or there comes a point where God ain't even trying to get you to repent. He's just going to put some fire under your behind and remind you who God really is. So don't keep playing games. I'm telling you, somebody out there needs to hear this warning because you have been playing, playing, playing playing, praying and playing, praying and playing, saying and playing, going to church and playing, worshiping and playing, praising and playing. Quit playing. Your time's about wound up. You need to quit playing. That's your warning. Please take heed. I do not want to see what could be in store for you. See, we don't have to go to hell to experience hell. God knows how to deliver hell right to your door.